So while we're talking about OPC clients communicating with OPC servers, you really should know that the OPC Foundation has been working very, very hard to make sure that your clients and your servers can actually communicate with each other out of the box so that you have a plug and play experience and not so much a plug and pray experience. Uh, and we'll talk about those different initiatives right now. Well, first it starts out with required interfaces. Every OPC server is supposed to have some uh, interfaces that are required. So for example, if somebody has an OPC Data Access 3.0 server and maybe you're interested in browsing, you can see that the IOPC browse in OPC Data Access 3.0 is actually required. And you should notice that in OPC Data Access 2 it was actually optional as it was in OPC Data Access 1.0. So you can actually look at the chart and you'll be able to, to tell what is a required feature and what is actually optional. And this you'll see in, um, uh, in groups as, as an example. And you can actually go and technically look at each one of these requirements and see whether they're required or not. But you know, that's a little bit difficult uh, because uh, how is each person going to take a look at each server and look at all technical aspects, which is why the OPC Foundation actually put out a self-certification test for OPC client and server vendors. And in fact, what the vendors can do is test their product against this test hardness. And once their products pass, they will actually get the logo that you see here at the bottom, at the center bottom, the self-tested logo. And really, what you should be asking each and every vendor is this, did your product pass the OPC compliance self-certification testing? And by the way, the results are actually posted on the OPC Foundation website. So all of that is on the OPC Foundation website, and I encourage you to go there, www.opcfoundation.org. The OPC Foundation has also been putting on OPC interoperability workshops, which have been, in my opinion, an outstanding success. Here's a picture from one of them, where you see a whole bunch of vendors sitting together in one big room. So a whole bunch of competitors actually sit with each other, uh, partners sit with each other, all in an effort to make sure that when their products reach the uh, customers, the end users, that they uh, will be able to connect to each other without, uh, without any problems. So the vendors actually test with the other vendors. And this happens three times around the world each and every year. It happens once in the United States, happens once in Europe, and it happens once in Japan. So um, in three places around the world each and every year, and all the member companies have an opportunity to join. There's no excuse for anyone not to be able to, to participate. And again, the results are posted on the OPC Foundation website. But the question you should be asking a vendor is this, when did you last participate in an OPC interoperability session? Because if they did participate, number one, the results will be on the OPC Foundation website. But second, you can be pretty sure that this is a company that consistently tests its products and uh, will likely be very interoperable, not only now, but also in the future. The OPC Foundation also has a fairly new initiative called the OPC Certification Labs. This is actually pretty neat because these are independent organizations that are certified by the OPC Foundation. And what they do is they uh, put OPC products through a battery of tests uh, to test them out, and they actually post the results on, on a website so that you can actually take a look at the results and then compare them with your particular project requirements. Really neat actually, these are third party certification labs and you should look for the uh, logo uh, as you see here on the bottom right hand side. So the strategy for the OPC Foundation has been to provide an interoperable, reliable and secure connection all the way from the shop floor to the top floor of an organization and it's to partner wherever possible and the OPC Foundation has been absolutely in my opinion outstanding at partnering with other organizations to make sure that they reuse existing knowledge and it's to provide a platform for vendors to cooperate and they've been doing a tremendous job at that and to provide certification for products so uh, as we talked about earlier the certification to make sure that your product the products that you're using are actually certified and are ready to go using OPC in any case OPC as we talked about it's a published and secure API that talks about how process data passes between different application 
it enables us to standardize a technology and not a particular product so you don't have to uh, rely on any specific vendor any longer and now you can take a best of breed solution uh, so that you can take the best HMI in the world and combine it with the best PLC in the world and combine that with the best historian in the world or advanced process control application and an enterprise resource planning application and a computer maintenance management system and put it all together using OPC to reduce both the uh, short term and the long term costs. It's pretty easy to use and I highly recommend that you take a look at what it can do for you.